Understanding disease-modifying therapies in MS can be downright confusing, but in this video series, I'm helping you decode it. Don't turn away because the next video in the series starts right now. and thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video series, I'm helping you decode MS disease-modifying therapies, the medicines that we use to slow down multiple sclerosis, to prevent attacks, to slow disability, and prevent new brain and spinal cord damage. In the first video on this series, I focused on the route of administration, talking about medicines that are given by self-injection, those that are given by pill, and those that are given intravenous. So if you missed that video, I'll throw a card up above so you can check it out. In this video, the second video in the series, we're gonna focus our attention on the frequency of administration, how often you take the various medicines. So with that in mind, let's jump in. At first blush, you might not think that the frequency with which you take a medicine or how often you take a medicine would be all that important. But keeping in mind that MS medicines are taken for life, you're taking them for a very long time. So the frequency with which you need to take them does become relevant. And so it's something that we need to think about as we factor in all the other things in picking the right medicine for you at the right time. For starters, there's a divide between MS disease-modifying therapies that are continuous in nature and those that are discontinuous, and allow me to explain. Most medicines that exist, I'm not talking about MS, I just mean in general, most medicines that exist are continuous. I'll use an example of medicines that I take. So I have high cholesterol, thanks mom and dad, and I take a cholesterol pill every morning, and I'm supposed to do that every single morning. I never take a day off, I always take my cholesterol pill, and that medicine lowers my cholesterol, thereby lowering my risk of stroke and heart attack. That is an example of a continuous medicine. Most medicines are. There are, however, some medicines, including some MS ones, that are discontinuous. You don't continue to take them for a long time. You only take them for a set period of time, and then you're done. And that's kind of unusual. So. In this video, why don't we start by talking about the discontinuous medicines, and then in the second part, we'll do the continuous ones. Here we go. There are three total MS disease-modifying therapies that are discontinuous. The first is mitoxantrone or Novantrone, and this is a medicine that's really fallen out of favor. It's not used by MS neurologists anymore because of the safety profile. I remember back when we used to give it, it's an IV bag and it was a blue liquid. And so I remember patients asking about Smurf juice. And so Smurf juice or mitoxantrone was not, it's not given continuously. It was given once a month for a couple months in a row and then we stopped. And this was done as an induction therapy. Mitoxantrone was rebooting the immune response in a really interesting manner. There are two medicines that are part of the MS armamentarium that we do still use in practice that are discontinuous. The first one is another IV medicine called alemtuzumab. Limtrata is the trade name. So Limtrata is an infusion in the vein. It's given over a period of eight hours in a given day, and it's given for five days in a row in the first year. And I call that the first round. And then after those five days, you wait an entire year and you do no more therapy. And on the anniversary of the first time you do it, you repeat it for three days in a row, three eight-hour days. So it's five days the first year, wait a year, then three days the second year, eight in total, and then you're done. That's right, you heard me, done. You don't take any more disease-modifying therapy unless you have new disease activity. That's an example of a discontinuous medicine. The third discontinuous disease-modifying therapy for multiple sclerosis is a pill. It's called cladrine tablets or Mavenclad. And it's given as a pill that you take a, once a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so five days in a row on the first month, and then you're done. So I joke it's like a reverse birth control pill. Then on the second month, you repeat that process once. So a pill on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you're done for the first year. So 10 pills the first year. Then on the anniversary, you repeat that process once. Five pills the first month, five pills the second month. Then again, you're done treating unless you have new disease activity. Now, it's winter time and it's cold inside. Please give me a like and please subscribe. 
Now, obviously, these discontinuous medicines work differently than other continuous ones, but getting into the way they work, that's going to be covered in a different video. Instead, let's now turn our attention to continuous medicines, a more traditional way of thinking about taking meds. When considering continuous MS disease-modifying therapies, there's really a spectrum from doing something once every single day to doing something only once every six months. And so let's start over here and we'll work our way over here. So for starters, there are pills that can be taken twice daily. So Tecfidera is a pill that you take once in the morning, once in the evening. Vumerity is two pills in the morning, two pills in the evening. And it's important that you take both because the medicine doesn't work if you only take it once a day. Then there's a bunch of options to take a medicine once a day. You can do a Copaxone injection once a day or Lutopa. This is the 20 milligram formulation. Uh, there's also a bunch of pills that are offered once a day. This includes Gelinia and then all the Gelinia Me Too drugs, so Ponvori, Mazent, and Zaposia, as well as Abagio is a pill that you take once a day. Next, we move to doing something less often than once a day. We then move to medicines that are not taken daily, so they're taken less frequently. And the first option is to do something three times a week. And this includes an injection of Rebif, or an injection of beta seron, or an injection of Extavia. Next, we move to a once-weekly treatment. And this is an intramuscular injection called Avonex, one of the oldest medicines on the market. Then there are medicines that are taken once every two weeks. This includes Plegarty. So Plegarty is an injection under the skin that's taken only twice a month. Next, there are two medicines that are taken once monthly. This includes the subcutaneous injection of Kesimpta or the monthly infusion of Tysabri. There's also increasing use of Tysabri given every six weeks. So in my practice, I have some patients that get Tysabri every four weeks, and I have some other patients that get Tysabri every six weeks. And that decision uh, has a lot to do with mitigating safety. Safety will be discussed in another video on this series. Now lastly, as we talk about continuous medicines for MS, there are ones that are given only every six months. And these include some of the IV B cell depleters, such as Ocrevus, Ocrelizumab, and Rituxan, Rituximab. Uh, Rituxan's off-label in the United States, but they're both used once every six months. So for both of those, you get an infusion in the vein, then you come back six months later and you get it again. In this video series, I'm helping you decode the MS disease modifying therapies. In this specific video, we tackled the discussion on frequency of administration. Tune in to the next video in the series where I'll be discussing mechanism of action, really getting into the details of how these drugs work. Until that video or until my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.